Hi, it's Lara here. Today is June 17th, and I'm here with your weekly astrology forecast um, for the week of June 17th to the 23rd, 2020. So, thanks for being here. Um, we've got a lot to talk about, and most of it is in relation to the upcoming eclipse. Um, the solar eclipse that's happening in the sign of Cancer at zero degrees Cancer, a really significant spot, um, and on the actual uh, solstice as well. So, um, you know, this is a big deal. It is the eclipse that's happening between two other eclipses. Normally, you know, we have two eclipse seasons um, in a year, and normally the, there's only two eclipses in each of those, right? A solar and a lunar eclipse. Um, and so this time we've had, or we will have three. So we had a lunar eclipse in Sagittarius. This is a solar eclipse in Cancer. And then we're going to have another lunar eclipse in Capricorn um, on July 4th. So this one is smack dab in the middle. It is probably the most significant one um, of the year, um, at very least of this eclipse season. And we're gonna talk about all of that, but before we get there, there's just a couple of other things um, to mention. So speaking of the moon, as usual, I always like to tell you where the moon is at so you can really um, get a sense of how that feels for you on the day to day. And you can use the moon, you know, in terms of um, where she's at in the zodiac to help you navigate your your week, right? Your, your month, um, because the moon in different signs lends well to different sort of energies and activities. And depending on our own personal makeup and our own birth chart, um, we, you know, we'll respond to those things differently. So, and I have, as always, over on my website, there's um, the free guide to working with the moon that you can grab if you haven't done that yet. And you just click the link below and you can go over there and grab it. But so the moon is in Taurus. Um, right now as I'm recording this on the 17th of June. And then on uh, tomorrow, on Thursday, it will move into Gemini, right? So Gemini is more social. Gemini is an air sign. It's a mutable air sign, while Taurus is a fixed earth sign, right? So um, Moon in Gemini tends to be a little bit more social, a little bit more communicative, um, that sort of thing. And then Sunday, the Moon will move into Cancer. And that's when we'll have, um, you know, over those days, we'll have the solstice as well, which is when the sun moves into Cancer and the solar eclipse. They're happening at the same time. So, like I said, we're going to talk a lot more about that. And then on Tuesday, the moon, the moon will move on into Leo. Before we get into all things eclipse, though, I'll also mention to you that Mercury is stationing and... Um, will be uh, retrograding as of tomorrow, actually, June 18th. So Mercury officially retrogrades. It's in the shadow zone, obviously, now. And um, when a planet retrogrades, you know, when it stations, so basically when it slows down, it's moving forward, or, or we perceive it, um, it is moving forward, and then it slows down and and then it starts to move backward. We perceive it moving backward. It's not actually moving backwards, but from our perspective here on Earth, that's what it looks like to us. So, um, you know, just for simplicity's sake, we say it's moving backward. So it's retrograding, right? And it will retrograde through the degrees of the zodiac that it has already been through. Um, it, it entered Cancer May 28th, and is there until August 4th, which is longer than usual because it's retrograding there. So um, the retrograde goes June 18th to July 12th. And, you know, Mercury retrograde is the, the retrograde that most people are familiar with. We like to blame a lot of things on Mercury retrograde. Um, and it is, you know, there's a lot of memes and stuff about it. And it is accurate um, that 
you know, Mercury retrograde can bring about things like communication itch issues, technical glitches, um, technology, electronics breaking down, vehicle problems, you know, um, travel travel glitches, this kind of thing. It can happen because Mercury rules all of those things, right? The mind, communications, moving parts, um, you know, short distance travel more so than, you know, long distance overseas travel, but, um, it does, it does rule travel. And so those things can go awry during a Mercury retrograde. And it sort of depends on how, how it's impacting your personal chart, whether you really feel the effects of it. But the general, you know, advice is with Mercury retrograde in particular, it's a time of um, slowing down, you know, seeking the, the the inner sort of knowledge and communications, um, you know, so going inward and retrieving the messages, right? Your internal guidance system kind of thing, connecting with that. And, um, but also very much about just making sure you've got your bases covered. You've got the details covered. If you're having to do things like, you know, purchase a new phone or, um, sign some sort of a contract or agreement, or you have to have an important conversation, um, or send an important message or email or whatever. It's just, you know, make sure that all the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed and that, um, all the details are taken care of. Like we can't stop life every time Mercury goes retrograde because it happens several times a year. Um, you know, so that was, that's completely unrealistic, but just, you know, be mindful of when it's happening so that you are not running around, uh, like a crazy person, because if that, when we're not paying attention, that's when those things tend to happen, right? When we're just kind of, um, going full bore we don't pay attention to the details and then things mess up and that's when the universe right or mercury in this case goes okay i you know i i try to warn you um that you were supposed to be paying attention to these things you're supposed to slow down right now but you didn't so now i'm gonna have to force you to do it kind of thing so that's the way that works um so and that's enough about mercury retrograde you know we talk a lot about that and and uh you can find all kinds of stuff on Mercury Retrograde if you want to uh, look it up. Just be discerning where you get your information, right? Um, oh, and I forgot to tell you, Mercury is retrograding at between 14 and 15 degrees of Cancer. So lots going on in Cancer um, that we're about to talk about. I just wanted to mention, though, that Neptune is joining the retrograde party as well. So many planets retrograde on June 23rd. Um, so on next Tuesday, you know, Neptune retrogrades every year for about five months at a time. So it's not uncommon. What makes these things stand out tend to be the particulars in terms of conversations that are happening, you know? Um, and if, it, if you're, if it's hitting a particularly sensitive point for you. So I won't say too much, uh, or I won't say anything more about that because I really want to spend the time talking about the eclipse. So, um, this eclipse is happening, as I already mentioned, at zero degrees Cancer, so the very, very beginning of the cardinal water sign of Cancer, at the same time as the solstice, summer solstice here in northern, um, in North America, and which is, you know, this spoke on the wheel of the year, right? Where it's a major turning point. And this, this eclipse, although eclipses come in families, right? So we are, for the last 18 to 24 months, we've had eclipses in Cancer and Capricorn on that axis. Um, that's where the, the story has been playing out. And this eclipse in Cancer will be the last one in Cancer and then the next one in Capricorn. It is finishing, sort of finishing out the story, but there, there is some overlap. And, you know, even those eclipse families are part of a bigger cycle because astrology, right? It's all about cycles within cycles within cycles. So, um, but th this, 
this is significant. Um, I will tell you that before I forget, if you look back to um, 2001 in June, um, I can't remember the exact date, but it would have been around the exact uh, this time of the year. I don't know if I wrote it down here. Um, I don't think I did, unfortunately, but there was an eclipse, um, at the same point in the sky at zero degrees cancer. So, um, in June, 2001. So if you look back, I think it was the 21st, I, I can't remember exactly, but if you look back to June, 2001, you can get a sense of the themes, right? And if this eclipse triggered something specific in your chart. So to that end, if you have significant things going on in your chart at around that zero degrees cancer mark, right? Um, then you're going to be feeling this eclipse. So um, you can look at your chart and, and decipher whether you have sun, moon, rising, a cluster of planets, you know, one of the angles, whatever, at uh, around the zero degrees cancer mark. And, and then you will know kind of what to expect. And of course, also, it's, it's about the aspects, right? The conversations that are happening between the eclipse point as well. So, um, so yeah, if you, if you take a look back at that and, um, oh yeah, June 21st, I do have it written down. June 21st, 2001, there was a solar eclipse at zero degrees cancer. So, and keeping in mind as well that just because the actual eclipse is happening on a specific date, it doesn't mean that in that moment or on that day, something's going to happen. It, it sets events in motion. So things, you know, the story kind of reverberates out right after the actual eclipse. And we may get sort of a, a feeling of what's to come as well beforehand. So, um, while I'm talking about zero degrees cancer, I want to show you something um, that I think is interesting. So you may or may not have heard of something called the Thema Mundi. So the Thema Mundi is um, a, a sort of a mythical birth chart and it has its origins in, in Hellenistic astrology and it is thought to be the birth chart of, you know, the inception of the universe. So the interesting thing about this is that the Thema Mundi has, so it's the, the birth chart of the world, right? It has cancer on the ascendant. Um, so I'm just going to show it to you. You can look up more information on this if you want. But, you know, here we've got, um, this is what it looks like. And this is where the different planets are in the Thema Mundi. Right. And it has to do where the planets are in with um, the planets being in their joys and, and such. So there we have. So the, so the moon, therefore, which is, you know, associated with cancer, um, rules cancer, is in the sign of cancer in the Thema Mundi. And we see that the ascendant is in cancer. Right. So um, it's interesting. Like I heard, I was hearing somebody speak about this and I, I recently listened to an interview or, or a presentation with um, Richard Tarnas, the brilliant Richard Tarnas who wrote Cosmos and Psyche. Um, I actually, I'll probably post the link to that talk below so that you can check it out for yourself because in it he speaks um, about the, the history making astrology of 2020, right? Particularly Saturn, Pluto, Uranus um, pieces. So I'll, I'll post a link to that below so you can check it out for yourself. But um, anyways, so what I was, what occurred to me when I was, um, or the connection that I made when I was, you know, listening to this and somebody else was recently talking about the theme of Monday as well, but that this is like, we are, we are at a major turning point, a major tipping point. Um, we are really in this, well, Richard Tarnas actually talked about it as well, this birthing phase, right, of a whole new world. 
Um, and so what happens during birth, <laughs> the birth process, if you've ever given birth, you know, um, it's not comfortable. It's not pretty. Um, you know, there are birth pains. And so we're kind of all collectively experiencing these birthing pains right now. And, um, you know, cancer is the sign of the mother, the great mother. So this just all kind of like, it's like, just all makes sense to me. Um, you know, and I, so I thought I would share that with you. I thought it was interesting. Um, and now I'm going to show you the chart for the eclipse. And then we're going to talk more about some of those pieces. So here is um, the chart for the eclipse, which is June 21st. And it is happening um, 2.41 a.m. Eastern time. So in, in some places um, like, you know, L.A. kind of thing, I, it, it'll happen on the 20th. And then, but it'll happen early in the wee hours of the 21st here, uh, Eastern time. So you can adjust according, accordingly for your time zone, excuse me. So here's the chart. Uh, I, I kept it simple. I took, you know, I looked at it with the asteroids and other things on there. And then I took all those things off to try to keep it simple and, and clean for you. Um, so here we've got the sun and the moon at zero degrees cancer, right? So this is a new moon lunar eclipse when the sun and the moon come together to birth something new, right? That's a new moon. And in this case, the moon will be eclipsing the light of the sun. And it's an it's what we call an annular eclipse. So you'll see that ring of fire on the outside, right? If it's visible where you are. Um, but, the, but the black circle in the middle, because the moon is... Um, is is blocking the light of the sun right so sun and the moon there and eclipses happen when the moon is in within a certain range of the nodes so in this case even though the north node is at 29 gemini um and the moon is at zero degrees cancer they are within a degree of each other they are extremely close and so the closer that conjunction um, the more powerful it is, right? So we've got that going on. And then across the sky here, we've got the south node, obviously, at 29 Sag. Um, and then, you know, we still have Jupiter, Pluto, asteroid Ceres is in there, Cheriklo is in there, um, further away, obviously, from the eclipse point. But that's energy is still going on there. But what I really want to draw your attention to in this case is um, Saturn here at zero degrees Aquarius, right? So this um, conversation between Saturn and the eclipse is a tight, tight, tight conversation called an inconjunct or a quincunx. So we're going to talk about that because it's significant. And then the other thing I want to mention, and I, I don't I, you know, I haven't heard too many other people talk about this. I don't know if I've heard anybody else talk about this, frankly, but uh, we've got Mars here, right? And um, Pisces, and it is making a square to the eclipse. It's not exact, but, you know, it's it's still there. And so I think that's relevant. Um, so that's what I want to show you. I don't think there's anything else I really want to point out, but that's what I wanted to show you. So you get a sense for where things are at. And let's talk more about, you know, first I'll just briefly mention the square to Mars because I really want to talk about the inconjunct. So the square to Mars, when we have um, a planet squaring the nodal axis, it's, it's what in evolutionary astrology, you know, is called a skipped step. It's what's referred to as a skipped step. And the easy way to, or the easiest way I know how to, to describe that or to articulate that simply is it's kind of what trips us up <laughs> on our journey, right? On, um, you know, our soul's path, which is the, the path of, you know, the nodes of the moon. And so, think about the energy of Mars in this case, which is squaring the nodes, right? So Mars is the warrior. 
Mars is um, this planet of instinct and assertiveness and um, drive and will and going after, you know, what we want to to sort of conquer or um, take or have, right? So, so this is Mars, and so what can trip us up on our collective sort of evolutionary journey, uh, which is right now, you know, the North Node is in Gemini. Um, so, and we've talked about that in previous videos. I won't go there right now. You can look those, that video up if you want. Um, so, you know, if you're not sure what I'm talking about right now, but so the North Node in Gemini, right, right now, and then Mars is squaring this. So, so Mars, this energy of Mars, if misplaced and misused um, and not dealt with sort of properly, not acted on productively uh, or optimally can, can trip us up. And so what does that mean? Well, I think it's like things like, you know, misplaced or misguided aggression, um, as opposed to assertiveness, impulsiveness, um, rage, selfishness, you know, these are all things that we could associate with the lower vibration of, of Mars energy, right? So ideally, a square is about taking action to resolve the tension. So if we use that Mars energy, and Mars is about to move into its own sign, right, um, of Aries for like the rest of the year, we've spoken about that briefly before. Um, but if we use that to our advantage, right, and we use that to assert ourselves, to take action, um, you know, maybe to do physical things even, um, then that's more helpful than using it um, in a more kind of negative, unconscious way. So that's the square to Mars. Um, and, you know, courage would be a word too that I didn't use when, when describing Mars as well. So, but, um, that's the square to Mars and then and what I really want to spend the rest of the time talking about before I get to each of the signs is the in conjunct or the, that conversation between Saturn in Aquarius at zero degrees and the eclipse at zero degrees Cancer, right? So again, want to remind you, it is a new moon that's happening. So this points to a new beginning. It's at zero degrees. The sort of... Um, Zero degrees of the cardinal signs, which are Aries, Cancer, Libra, Capricorn, is called the Aries point. It's the, the inception point. Um, it's that initial impulse, right? That new beginning. And it's quite potent. So this points to a potent and powerful new beginning. Um, so, but these energies are at odds with each other. Saturn in Aquarius and the, the sun and the moon in um, Cancer are at odds with each other because they're in um, a conversation called a quincunx or an in conjunct. Um, although technically there's some technical minor technical differences between those two things they're, they're they basically for our purposes mean the same. Um, and that is 150 degrees angle. And what happens when you have a quincunx is it's like an itch you can't scratch. There is um, a feeling of damned if you do, damned if you don't sort of thing. You know, if you have one of these or many of them in your uh, birth chart, you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, you know, I, I do. If you have a yod, a yod or yods in your birth chart, you'll you'll know this feeling all too well. So, and, it, and that's because the energies don't have anything in common, right? So let's, in this particular case, Aquarius is a fixed air sign. Cancer is a cardinal water sign. So the elements don't have anything in common and the modes don't have anything in common. And so um, it really requires adjustment to make these things work. It requires trial and error. It requires a willingness to um, to see your blind spots, right? Because it, it's like they're not seeing eye to eye. They can't really see each other's point of view. Um, so it requires a lot of effort to, to uh, work at a solution and a willingness to to work out the issues kind of thing right 
So how do we integrate those two different energies? Um, we, a, a lot of times what people tend to do when they have um, this aspect in their birth chart is they kind of compartmentalize the two areas of wherever the, the two planets are, right? And incidentally, um, Cafe Astrology, while I'm thinking about it, has a really good um, explanation with some sort of real life examples on this. And I'll put the link to that below too. So ultimately, we have to be willing to sort it out if we want it to feel better. And but but we have to be aware of that kind of conflict. We have to be aware that that we're doing that, that those two things are not seeing eye to eye, that they're not on the same page, right? Um, so whether that be like, you know, work and, um, you know, your romantic life um, or children, you know, that are at odds and it's like, you know, try, trying to work those things out. And sometimes a, a queen cunks, can feel like things are out of our control as well. Ultimately, they're 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 not entirely because we get to choose, right, how we deal with this, but um, it can feel like that. So Saturn and Aquarius, right? This is like Saturn is our our is the boundaries and the rules and responsibilities and um, duties and that sort of thing. And Aquarius is it's it's about the future and, and a sense of you know liberation and and many other things but and then um we've got cancer which is about our emotional security needs and um you know our our sense of home and family and that sort of thing so like when i was thinking about this i i was trying to to sort out you know like how is this how how is this feel how's this playing out in the in the world in our experience or personally wherever these two areas wherever zero aquarius and zero cancer fall for you in your chart right and we're going to get to that in in a couple of minutes here but um i feel like this is in a more um, collective sense, it, it's very much about how our emotions, cancer, um, are perceived or perceived threats to our emotional security, right? And our home and our family and that kind of thing um, are working in this, like they're in this, or they're not working, they're in this uncomfortable conversation with our responsibilities and duties and boundaries and the structures and all that, those Saturnian things. So some things that I was considering here, I'm just looking at my notes, like, do we have ideas about how the future should look um, that are coming from our emotional security, right? So for example, because this is relevant to current uh, goings on in the world, if we look at people who have issues with racial equality, right? For example, it's kind of, um, you know, these people have a misplaced perception, right? Like, like they feel like, you know, having racial equality um, threatens their sense of security in some way. Um, and so they have certain ideas about how the how the future should look, and what boundaries and rules and, and, and that sort of thing need to be in place, right? They can't reconcile the notion that ra racial equality doesn't mean that they have less. It reminds me of that uh, that Facebook meme that I've seen going around, um, equal rights for others, you know, doesn't mean less rights for you. It's not pie. So it, it's kind of like that conversation. Um, and just to break it down specifically, between the sun and the moon, right? Just to take those two pieces separately, even though they're in a conjunction, a new moon, right? They come together to birth something new, but Saturn in conjunct the sun um, is like misplaced responsibilities, right? So it's like um, duties and responsibilities, right? And our duties, sense of duties and responsibilities, Saturn conflict with our sense of self, the sun with our personal priorities, the sun. 
our personal kind of motivations. So those two things are not in alignment. It's like they're not, they don't have anything in common. It can feel very hard to work, to reconcile, to integrate those two things. Um, and, you know, with the moon in conjunct, you know, Saturn and, and moon in conjunction, it's like, again, duties and responsibilities, Saturn, um, they're in this uncomfortable conversation with our emotional security needs or the needs of our family um, and home and, and place of living and that sort of thing. And this made me think very much of, you know, what's been going on during the pandemic with working parents, parents that are working um, and then their kids are home because, you know, it, the whole homeschooling thing is going on and trying to reconcile those things. That's the in conjunct there. That's a perfect example of it, really. So um, ultimately, I think that, you know, one piece I didn't talk a lot about here, and I'll just mention, um, is really what what is the energy of cancer, right? It, I mentioned to you, cancer is the, the sign of the great mother. It is about this sense of mothering and nurturing and safety and security um, and getting our emotional needs taken care of. Um, and so we've, and I've spoken about this in past videos, but over these last couple of years, and particularly with the um, the shit show that is 2020 thus far, this has been really a focus for us is our sense of emotional security. It, things are feeling very insecure right now. And so it's really important for us to pay attention to that, right? Um, but also to not, to not act in, in ways that are harmful to ourselves or others because we are feeling emotionally insecure. Um, you know, because there can be this uh, taking it too far to try to protect ourselves and, and this lashing out. Think of the symbol for cancer, the crab, right? It has this tough exterior and this soft, mushy middle, um, has a tendency to retreat if threatened or to lash out and, and right, fight back. Um, but, and really is very protective. So, you know, that's, that's the energy um, that this eclipse is sitting in. So I feel like I'm rambling all over the place a bit, but, uh, and it is like, it's this, this whole in conjunct energy, right? It's like uh, 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 these adjustments, it's difficult. And that's how I feel like trying to articulate this to you, actually. Um, so that gives you a sense, I guess, you know, of what that looks like and feels like. But ultimately, what I want to do here is I'm going to go through each of the signs. And I'm, I'm going to talk about obviously, the house that cancer is sitting in for you. So that's where the eclipse is happening at zero degrees. And then I'm going to mention what house Saturn is sitting in. So you can get a sense of where do things need to be reconciled? Um, where am I? Where are my blind spots? Where am I feeling like I, I these two energies can't work together? And what can I do about that? And, you know, it requires, again, it requires a willingness to do something about it. It requires a lot of adjustments, a lot of trial and error. Um, and that's kind of where we're at globally right now, right? Like, it's like, we're, if you're not willing to try, we're not going to get anywhere. Um, but trying means making mistakes along the way. And that's okay, right? Adjustment. That's how these adjustments happen. We try something, it doesn't work. Um, you know, we have an idea about something, we get new information, we realize, oh, maybe I need to adjust my perception um, or my way of doing things or thinking about this, you know, um, and so, and that's, that's okay. That's sort of where we're at is this period and this eclipse is highlighting that, right, with the in conjunct to, to Saturn and Aquarius, this, this hard work, Saturn, um, to create a better future, Aquarius, and, you know, how 
our emotional responses and our sense of emotional security um, may be, those two things may be um, out of alignment and we need to do some adjusting and again, some trial and error and, and experimenting and all of that to, to try to figure this out. So without further ado, let's begin. And first and foremost, listen for your rising sign and then your sun and the moon. And I'm going to do this quite quickly because the video is going to run out in about 10 minutes. Um, so, you know, about a minute on each and just definitely, definitely listen to the intro. Otherwise me just, you know, telling you the houses isn't really going to mean much to you. So, all right. So we're going to start with cancer because cancer, the eclipse is happening in your sign, right? So, um, this is the first house of self and your physical being and um, vitality, the physical body, um, your sense of how, like how the world perceives you and how you project yourself out into the world. That's all first house. And then Saturn is sitting over there in Aquarius in your eighth house of other people's resources, of, of intimate connections, of vulnerability, of, you know, um, issues around psychological wounding and healing and, and the deep psyche, um, hidden, you know, knowledge and, and that sort of thing is all eighth house, right? And so those two areas can be like there's adjustments that need to happen, but it's uncomfortable. It's that in conjunct energy. And again, I'm going to put an article or um, point you to a page on Cafe Astrology that gives, I, I feel like, some really good examples that can help you get a sense of what this really feels like. Um, so that's for you, Cancer. Next, we have Gemini. The eclipse is happening in your second house. These are whole sign houses, by the way, that I'm using when I do these general forecasts. Um, so that may differ slightly for you if you have your chart in a different um, house system. So, but the eclipse is happening in your second whole sign house, Gemini, and that is about your personal resources, your finances, your um, time and energy, your values, what's important to you, your sense of worth and self-worth. And then the in conjunct um to Saturn in the ninth, which is about your ideology, your ideologies, your belief systems and worldview and um, issues around higher knowledge and higher learning. Um, you know, it can be about, you know, publishing and, and um, higher like college, university, that sort of thing. Um, and it can involve foreign people in places and what we learn from from those people. Sometimes that involves travel, long distance travel. So those are the two areas that are in that uncomfortable kind of conversation at the time of this eclipse, Cancer. And then, or Gemini, sorry. Now we have Taurus, where we've got the eclipse happening in your third house of communications and um, mobility and your immediate environment, um, you know, and the people in it. So, you know, and that's like people in your neighborhood, people that are, you know, close teammates, workmates, cousins, siblings, this sort of thing. Um, and your communications, you know, all things communications. So that's uh, where the eclipse is. And then this in conjunct from the 10th house is... Um, is about your career, your public reputation, your worldly ambitions, the legacy you wish to leave, your relationship to authority, um, potentially, you know, sort of authoritarian or, or more sort of father figures as well. So that's what's going on for you, Taurus, um, you know, that, that conversation. And then we've got Aries where the eclipse itself is happening in your fourth house of home and family and place of living um, and your sense of emotional security. And because Cancer is at home in the fourth house, right? So, so those energies. And then the in conjunct from the 11th house where Saturn and Aquarius is. Um, so that is the group, friendship groups, networks, clubs, associations, um, you know, the house of gains. So how do we get, you know, how do we gain something, get where we're going? The people that are walking the same path as us that can help us get where we're going, our hopes and dreams for the future, that sort of thing. So those two areas of your chart specifically um, are in that in conjunct conversation that we were talking about in the intro. Next, we have Pisces, the eclipses unfolding in your fifth house, Pisces, of children, of your creative self-expression, 
um, you know, creative projects, how you have fun, what sparks joy for you in general. And then the, um, the in conjunct from Saturn and Aquarius is happening in your 12th house, which is the house of the hidden, what happens behind closed doors, um, the unseen, how you spend time and rest and, and reflection, um, you know, your connection to your spiritual life. This can be um, things buried in the subconscious or, or self-sabotaging behaviors that we have, um, you know, so... Um, that's that's those two areas that are in an uncomfortable conversation over the time of, of the eclipse for you, Pisces. Next, we've got Aquarius. So Aquarius, for you, the actual eclipse is happening in your sixth house of your daily routine, um, you know, your health and wellness routines, issues around health and wellness, relationships between unequals, um, and, you know, it's in this uncomfortable conversation with Saturn and Aquarius in your first house of self because it's in your sign right of your physical vitality your physical body um how you project yourself in in the out in the world how the world perceives you these sorts of things so that's the conversation happening for you at the time of the eclipse and next we have we've got Capricorn the eclipse is happening in your seventh house and the in conjunct from Saturn um in the second. So seventh house is your one-to-one -one close personal relationships, right? Any kind of relationship you have that is of a, of a more sort of personal nature. Um, and, and then also um, this can have to do with contracts and agreements as well, seventh house. And then the si second house that in conjunct, you know, is um, has to do with your personal resources, so your money, your time, your energy, what you value, and your sense of um, self-worth as well. And so those two areas are kind of at odds at the time of this eclipse. Next, we've got Sagittarius, where the eclipse is unfolding in your eighth house of the, the hidden, of, um, you know, how you're vulnerable, of other people's resources, of intimacy, um, and... Then the in conjunct from Saturn is happening from the third house of communications, of your immediate environment, of your mobility, of, um, you know, siblings, cousins, neighbors, um, that sort of thing. And th that's where these two things are sort of at odds during this time. So that's for you, Sag. And then Scorpio, the eclipse is happening in your ninth house of higher learning, of um, foreign people and places and the things that we learn from people who are different from us, of our ideologies and belief systems and worldview, right? And then there is an uncomfortable conversation happening with Saturn in the fourth, that in conjunct, which is home, family, place of living, roots, ancestry, emotional sense of security, um, this kind of thing, right? So those are the two areas of the chart to, to look to. Next, we've got Libra. The eclipse is happening in your 10th house of your career and your public reputation and persona and your worldly ambitions and your relationship to authority and the legacy you wish to leave. And then that conversation from Saturn, that in conjunct is happening from the fifth house of what sparks joy for you, right? How you have fun, what brings you pleasure, um, your, your personal creative projects, and self-expression and children all things surrounding children um so that's for you libra next we've got virgo the eclipse itself is happening in your 11th house of the group of friendship groups clubs associations networks your hopes and dreams for the future and the people that can help you attain those and um then the uncomfortable sort of conversation from saturn and aquarius is happening in in the sixth house right um, which is your daily routine, your health and wellness, uh, all things health and wellness, um, issues around um, unequal relationships, and also sometimes pets as well. So that's what's going on for you, Virgo. And then last but not least, we've got Leo, where we've got the eclipse happening in your 12th house of the hidden, the unseen. Um places that are tucked away from the world, your connection to spirituality and your spiritual and mental health, um, you know, losses, 
um, self-sabotaging behaviors. And then the in uncomfortable conversation from Saturn is coming from the seventh house of your one-to-one -one close personal relationships um, and contracts and agreements, right? And so that's that's that conversation that's needing some adjustments there. So that's all 12 signs. We made it through. Um, I hope this was helpful to you and maybe a different take than, than some people have, a different spin than some people have put on it. And so um, if you have anything to say, you know, about your own personal experience, I'd love it if you put that in the comments below and let me know. Uh, if you have any questions, definitely as well. Um, and if you want a, a reading, then definitely reach out to me at my website, okay? Link is below. So take good care and I will see you next week. Bye for now.